Hola amigos. Somos familia. We are family. Welcome to the Tortilla Diaries. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Dominguez Karimi. And thanks for joining me this month as we celebrate La Familia Mexicana, Mexican American families. Each month, our program will feature a variety of topics. One month, I may feature life stories taken from my treasures from Aslan Oral History Project, or perhaps interviews from Latinos in different professions. Another month, I may highlight Afro-Latino artists or indigenous artists performing their music, reading their poetry, or short stories. Our goal remains to break down the barriers that exist between cultures and create a better understanding between peoples. Please join me in celebrating this rich and diverse culture. And remember, somos familia. Hola amigos, somos familia. Feliz Navidad y prospero año nuevo. Welcome to the Navideño edition of the Tortilla Diaries. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Dominguez Karimi, oral historian. This month, we'll learn about three Latino celebrations, Las Posadas, Los Pastores, and Nacimientos. The holy days began on December 12th with the miracle of La Virgen de Guadalupe and end on January 6th with El Día de los Reyes, Three Kings Day, the day the Magi arrived to pay tribute to El Niño Jesús. The tradition of Las Posadas began in Mexico in 1586, originally aimed to proselytize the tribal population to Catholicism. The tradition coincided with the Aztec celebrations of the winter solstice and the birth of the Aztec sun god, and achieved religious syncretism. The novenario of Las Posadas begins when Mary and Joseph leave for their journey to Bethlehem. Actors portray Mary, Joseph, angels, wise men, shepherds, and pilgrims, and sing La Canción para Pedir Posada. The candlelit procession travels to different homes each night looking for lodging or posada. They are denied entry and turned away. On La Noche Buena, Christmas Eve, they are finally granted shelter, and the event culminates with a dinner, a party, and a piñata. Thereafter, everyone attends Midnight Mass, La Misa del Gallo, the Rooster Mass. In my hometown of San Antonio, Texas, one of many Las Posadas processions travels along the beautiful river walk. Colorful twinkling lights and luminarias line the route. Decorated river barges loaded with Mexican food, mariachis, and people travel along the San Antonio River with music blaring, people waving, and children caroling. A sight to behold, Christmas in San Antonio is not one to be missed. While Las Posadas features the holy couple, Los Pastores highlights the common, everyday shepherds following the star of Bethlehem. Shepherds are highlighted in the medieval nativity play of Los Pastores. Rumored to have originated in San Antonio in the 1700s, this popular religious drama varies upon region. For example, the Library of Congress houses Christmas music dating back to the Middle Ages. The Los Pastores collection is one of them, originally called 
el segundo coloquio de los pastores, it is conjectured that people living in the isolated village of Arroyo Hondo, New Mexico, passed on the 15th or 16th century play through oral traditions over the years. Also known as miracle plays, the Spanish clergy performed them to enlighten illiterate churchgoers about biblical stories. Right now, we're going to listen to an original 1940s recording of Los Pastores, the Shepherds, from the Library of Congress's Juan Rael Collection. <laughs> A llevarle al niño este corderito. A llevarle al niño. We are fortunate that Dr. Rael collected the recordings for future generations. I mentioned the play began as a simple drama, but soon evolved into a comedy as it traveled from clergy to general public. Unlike the New Mexico play that originated long ago, the one I'm familiar with came from San Antonio during the Mexican Revolution, according to information from the Nettie Benson Collection at the University of Texas, Austin. This particular comedic drama originated in 1910 with Don Leandro Granados, who brought the handwritten pastorela in a notebook from his native Mexico. Father Carmelo Tranchise of Our Lady of Guadalupe Church translated the original and published it in 1949. The congregation began the yearly performance in the 1940s, and the play later moved from Our Lady of Guadalupe to the historic church of Mission San Jose. Founded in 1720 by Father Antonio Marguil, Mission San Jose is one of the first Spanish settlements in Texas. Many native tribes lived in the area, and who knows, maybe Father Marguil put on his own performances. When I was young, I vividly recall my mother looking forward to the Mission San Jose putting on Los Pastores. Since it's an outdoor venue, playgoers and actors alike must be prepared for the cold. The basic plotline follows. The play begins with a group of shepherds journeying to see El Niño Jesús, singing caminatas or walking songs. The pilgrims, peregrinos, are led by the angel Miguel, the shepherdess Gila, and a holy man, a hermit. At every corner, they encounter traps by Lucifer, Luz Bell, and his minions. In true comedic form, the bumbling core of demons beat down the group with cold, hunger, temptation, and weariness to make them give up their pilgrimage. Luckily, the evil plots are thwarted by the angel Miguel. The angel and his mighty sword finally banish Lucifer and his fallen angel army to hell for eternity. The shepherds arrive at the manger to worship El Niño Jesus, offering him gifts and singing songs of adoration. If you've ever performed in or seen Los Pastores, remember, all versions lead back to the original nativity play of the Middle Ages. Our focus now turns to El Niño Jesús. When my children were little, they surprised me by not wanting a replica of Santa or Frosty to display in the front yard. Can you guess what they wanted? An illuminated nativity with baby Jesus lying in a manger. A nacimiento scene. Like most Latino families in the U.S., we decorate our home with a manger scene or two during Christmas time. My favorite one is from Mexico, handmade from pottery and vibrantly painted. 
In fact, in Latino America, the popularity of nacimientos, nativity scenes, is higher than Christmas trees, and holiday festivals and contests revolve around them. Traditionally, nacimientos first appear on December 12th. All the figures are arranged around the manger, except El Niño Jesús. He comes on La Noche Buena, Christmas Eve. After his arrival, gifts from El Niño Jesús and not Santa are gathered around the nacimiento. In our family, we arranged our nativity at the base of the Christmas tree, and my children would play with the figurines throughout the holidays. You could say they put on their own nativity play. I found out St. Francis of Assisi recreated the first nacimiento in 1223 in the Italian village of Greccio. According to his biographer, St. Bonaventure, the Pope granted him authority to put the manger scene in a cave and allowed him to use people and a live donkey and an ox. That day, he preached his sermon about El Niño Jesús and was greatly overcome with emotion that he was unable to utter the name of Jesus. Bonaventure's narrative mentions a miracle performed by the hay used for the manger scene and how it cured cattle diseases and plague. Catholics all over Europe popularized nativities and the Spanish brought the tradition to the New World in the 1500s. The traditions of Las Posadas, Los Pastores, and Nacimientos have endured through the ages and will continue to survive in the future. Indeed, they are treasures handed down from our ancestors that we must continue to honor and cherish. You're listening to The Tortilla Diaries, a monthly production of Treasures from Aslan, written and produced by Dr. Rebecca Dominguez Karimi. Our final segment of the program highlights a flower, La Flor de la Noche Buena, the poinsettia. Who doesn't love poinsettias? These vibrant red flowers bloom during the winter months, brightening up the holidays and remain a tradition in many countries. The Aztecs of Mexico called them Cuetlazochil and made deep purplish red dye from the leaves. The milky white sap treated minor ailments. In Mexico and Guatemala, they are known as Flor de la Noche Buena, Christmas Eve flower. Spain calls them Flor de Pascua, Easter flower. And Chile and Peru named them Corona del Andes, crown of the Andes. It is rumored Montezuma lined his palace with large displays in honor of the birth of the sun god. Aztecs cultivated the flowers, considering them a gift from the gods. In 17th century Mexico, Franciscan friars living in the Mexican village of Taxco del Alarcón began using the flowers during Christmas time. However, a legend arose about La Flor de la Noche Buena 100 years earlier. The legend tells about how the poinsettias got its bright red flowers one Christmas Eve. La leyenda de Zoshi y la flor de la noche buena. The legend of Zoshi and the Christmas Eve flower. Once upon a time, in the faraway land of Mexico, there lived a little girl named Zoshi. Her name meant flor, or flower. She lived on the ranchito of El Durazno, the peach, with her abuelita Fina and older brother Juan. Her grandmother was a widow, and it was hard for them to make ends meet. 
She and her brother helped on the ranch, but sometimes it wasn't enough, and they went to bed hungry. They were able to grow maize, corn, frijoles, beans, and calabacita, squash, to eat. The chickens and goats gave them eggs, milk, and meat. Despite their hard life, Zoshi was like a little flower, bright, happy, and swaying in the wind. Today, Zoshi woke up happy. It would be the first time she would experience the festival of nacimientos that the new priest talked about. He brought many new ideas from Spain and loved telling them about popular Christmas Eve traditions. When they arrived at the chapel that morning, Padre Antonio asked people what they could donate to the nacimiento display. Their neighbors were donating beautiful items. One lady donated three colorfully woven sarapes. Another pledged an elaborate bark painting of the Star of Bethlehem, while yet another offered beautiful hand-painted ponchos for the Virgin Maria and Jose to wear. One wealthy farmer actually donated a pig for the fiesta afterwards to make the mouth-watering cochinita pibil she loved. This pork dish, wrapped in banana leaves and marinated in oranges, limes, and achiote chilies, was traditionally cooked in a hot stone-lined pit for over 24 hours. Many men eagerly volunteered to help the farmer dig and prepare the pit. Abuelita decided to donate a dozen tortillas de maíz for the dinner. Zoshi felt happy and knew that her abuelita's tortillas were the best in the world. Everyone had questions for Padre Antonio, but he patiently told them to wait. Then he informed everyone about the schedule for La Noche Buena. First, they would give the nacimiento offering, then the food and fiesta, and lastly, La Misa de Gallo. It would indeed be a night to remember. Padre Antonio told them he wanted live animals and people in the outdoor nacimiento. The little girl marveled when she heard the news. Maybe with such a nacimiento, Zoshi thought, they would witness a real Christmas miracle. On the way home, Zoshi felt downhearted because neither she nor Juan could honor El Niño Jesús with a gift. Padre Antonio seemed happy enough about Abuelita's humble offering of corn tortillas. Then, Zoshi thought, she would help her grind the corn. Grinding corn would be her ofrenda, her offering. The day of the event, Zoshi helped Abuelita grind the corn with the metate and felt a little bit better. Abuelita quickly went about making tortillas, and within minutes, they were tucked in a basket ready to go. Her grandmother waved adios, hurrying out the door to help with preparations. Zoshi and her brother stayed behind to do their chores. While feeding the chickens, she began thinking about her mother and father, wondering what life would be like if they were alive. She never knew her mother she died from a fever after childbirth, and her father was killed in an accident not long after while working in the silver mines of Sombrerete. Grief filled her heart for not having a mother and father to care for her, along with her inability to offer El Niño Jesús a gift. Tears flowed down her cheeks like a waterfall. Just then, a bright light emanated from a nearby tree. She walked towards it, and an angel appeared through the golden haze. Why are you crying, Nina? the angel asked. Because I have nothing to offer El Nino Jesus. I want to give him a gift with all my heart. Upon hearing her words, the angel pointed towards some weeds growing on the side of their dwelling. He told her, gather them into a bouquet, and trust God to do the rest. Zoshi followed the angel's directions, arranging them in a tidy pile and tied them together with her hair ribbon. On their way to church, she told Juan about El Angel. As they entered the nacimiento, 
Juan looked at her sad face and encouraged her to have faith in what the angel told her. Kneeling before the manger, tears fell from her eyes, dropping onto the weeds. So she put the tear-soaked weeds at the feet of El Niño Jesús. Suddenly, bright red flowers burst forth from the weeds. Juan looked on in amazement, while Padre Antonio and all the parishioners ran forth to marvel at the miracle of the Christmas flowers. Tears poured down Zoshi's face, but they were not tears of sadness. This time, they were tears of joy. And that's how a little girl named Zoshi, whose name means flower, witnessed a Christmas Eve miracle, the miracle of La Flor de la Noche Buena. Thank you for listening to the Navidad edition of the Tortilla Diaries. I hope you enjoyed this month's program and learned a little bit more about the Latino culture. In closing, I want to wish you all a Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. May your family stay safe this holiday season, free from illness. So until next month, Feliz Navidad. And remember, somos familia.